Hey, it's Dougie Wood, and I'm going to be showing you some brand new features that have been announced at SharePoint, which are absolutely fantastic and proper game changers to the way that you're going to do your document management. They are powered by AI, and we're going to be looking at a recent training video from Microsoft, which actually walks us through each of these new announcements and the features that we can expect. I'm going to be jumping in and out to give you some of my thoughts along the way. OCR in document translation can help improve AI understanding. While autofill columns are our heroes of enrichment, you draft and generate structured metadata. What would take hours to do manually can be automated in a matter of minutes. Autofill is a library column setting that includes an LLM prompt. You can manually target existing files, and once set up, an autofill column will automatically target new and modified files too. Let's see it in action. Here I am in the Green Energy product specification catalog. You'll notice that each document has a convenient product summary. This is actually an autofill column. Let's check it out. Here you can see that the product summary column has autofill turned on. And you can see that there's a prompt attached to it. The prompt is very simple. It says extract a brief two sentence summary of the product specification. This is the ease of autofill in action. Now let's set up a column of our own. I'm gonna go over here and create a new column. and it's gonna be a text column, and it's going to extract the product name from each of these documents. So I'm going to name it product name, and then I'm gonna go here to click setup. In the setup, you can see that autofill is suggesting a prompt for me. I'm gonna select this prompt, which is very simply written, please extract the product name from the document, ensure the name is capitalized properly, and if the product name is not found, return not found. I can test it against a, a document in my document library to make sure that it's working correctly. Here you can see that it's extracted the product name correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. I'm gonna save my new column. And then I'm going to select all of the documents in my library and run autofill against it. This will populate the product name column for me automatically. Now that I've configured this autofill column, any new or modified documents will also be processed by the same prompt, keeping my document metadata up. I think just to stop there, this is a fantastic feature because what it will allow you to do is pull out quite useful information. Now, I think project sum, uh, product summary or project summary, whatever that column is that, you, that they've got here, um, I don't think it's that useful, to be honest, um, because it re would require that you'd have to read the kind of summary of the documents to understand what it is anyway. And I think, to be honest, that Copilot would probably do a better job in the future of being able to find a document by asking it a uh, description. Whereas actually, what we'd probably be looking to do is extract out some of the key information. Say, for example, if this was um, a list of products, pull out, for example, the, the cost, the prices of those products, and then we could order the documents by price, or we could filter uh, and say, for example, only show me products which are above um, $100 or 100 pounds, for example. Um, it might be that you're wanting to extract key information, um, say from like invoices, we wanted to get email addresses, phone numbers, things like that. We can pull them straight out and maybe even then use them to integrate into a Power Automate workflow. So say, for example, we had a invoice and we had a certain date on it that we wanted to chase uh, the, the invoice. We could pull out the information that's required from the invoice, pass it through into a Power Automate workflow, which can then do that chasing on our behalf. To date. While that's running, I'd like to show you another really cool content AI feature right here in this library. It's called mm -hmm. Document Translation. Right here, we're connected to the latest translation services. I can easily translate one of these PDFs in up to 10 languages. There are five easy to use languages here, but I can also search for additional languages like Romanian. And I can even provide a glossary if I have specific terms I don't want translated or I want translated in a particular way. Translated copies are stored conveniently here in the same document library and maintain the same access control settings. Now, Let's refresh our document library so that we can see all the great metadata that Autofill and Translate is populated.
So that translate, I think, is fantastic. I get asked all the time in the comments on my videos about uh, automatic translation. Now, this is looking at automatic translation of documents, which is a fantastic first step. But I would hope to see in the future that Microsoft would roll out a similar feature for SharePoint pages as well, um, as we tend to find that um, at the moment, the translation features of SharePoint still require someone to manually go in and uh, translate each page that gets created inside of the SharePoint intranet. So here we are in the document library. I've updated my view so that you can see Autofill has filled out all of the product names from my documents. Now I'm gonna hand it over to my colleague, Nate, who's going to show you how to take advantage of all of this great metadata in business automations. Awesome, thank you, Corey. It's really great to be here with you today. My name is Nate Tennant, and I am a product manager in our OneDrive and SharePoint team. And today we're gonna to talk about automation capabilities that we can extend even further with our document library. Before we talk about automation in SharePoint, we have to mention the great partnership we have with Power Platform, giving you native integrations, as well as the ability and the full ecosystem to go and extend your solutions even further. Let's jump back into the demo with our document library. I'm back in our product catalog and you can see the rich metadata powered by Autofill for both the product name and the product summary. You'll also notice that I have a special approval status column, which is our new lightweight integration with both the Teams Approvals app and the underlying Power Platform approval service. Without ever leaving SharePoint, I can go in, select the item that I wanna send off for approval, click the column and go ahead and add in CJ, and I'll add Corey as well. And I can decide if I want them both to approve or in this case, if one is fine. And I'm gonna give them a quick note to say, please approve. And then I'll go ahead and click submit on that request. Now you're gonna see that approval request get created, update the pill here in real time. Let's take a look at another request that's already been submitted for me to go and approve. I can get the approval details right here in SharePoint by clicking on the pill. And I can see that Corey sent me our... I think this is a fantastic update as well because a lot of the kind of approvals that have been previously built, um, especially with Power Automate, unless it was done right, often the kind of where the workflow was up to wasn't always totally visible. Um, you'd often have to go into the approval center, maybe via Microsoft Teams even, um, to see where that workflow was up to. Whereas this interface makes it much easier for everyone to see exactly where that approval workflow is up to. Class for the A300 series. Now let's say I'm someone who spends my time in Teams and instead of in SharePoint, I actually want to go over to the approvals app. You'll see that same Speak of the devil. approvals experience with a link back to the source document in SharePoint and the request details that Corey submitted in SharePoint. I'm gonna say this one looks good and go ahead and approve right from Teams. Coming back to SharePoint, we can see if we open up the details here, the same document that was approved within Teams now shows up here in SharePoint. Now, there's another piece of automation that you're not seeing here directly within the library, but the team that I work with for this product catalog really likes to collaborate within Teams. From SharePoint, we have a flow running in the background so that anytime a product catalog spec is updated to say high priority, it posts this nice looking card in Teams. That way I can chat and engage my colleagues where they like to work. You'll also notice that same autofill summary is included in the adaptive card, along with a link back to SharePoint and some custom actions I've built to say, go book a meeting or contact the product catalog owner. This is a great way for me able to bring that context and rich metadata of SharePoint directly into Teams. Let's take a look at what that flow looks like under the covers. So this is what I was saying before about it's important to be able to extract data from files so that you can use that extracted data inside of a workflow um, to maybe send an email. I mean, they're posting a card inside Teams in this case, but um, it could be sending an email, it could be sending a Teams message, it could be just giving you a prompt, a reminder. Um, there's so much information that's in a document that if you were to extract it out, you can feed directly into an automated workflow. You'll see here every time that a file is created or modified from the green energy site in the product catalog document library, I have a condition to go and check whether that category value is high priority. If the condition is true, I have a adaptive card ready to go in Teams 
that pulls dynamic values for the file name and the autofill summary, again, populating here right in the card and teams, making that a really nice experience to start to extend. They're flexing a little bit here in terms of using this poster card type of thing because it just looks better inside of SharePoint, uh, inside of Teams. Uh, but don't get uh, too kind of worried about looking like that's loads of code and loads of programming and things like that. There's plenty of actions inside of Power Automate which you can use, like just sending a message into a team or uh, sending an email or anything like that, which doesn't require any understanding of code or um, any of this kind of advanced stuff that we're looking at here. So don't worry about that too much. And, uh, the rich metadata we have in SharePoint all the way back into Teams, bringing data and context right to where my users like to collaborate. These are just a few of the ways that you can bring the rich building blocks and features within SharePoint to start to string together your workflows and business process solutions. We're really excited to continue to build and bring more native capabilities, but also give you that extensibility and rich ecosystem of Power Platform. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope That's a lot of buzzwords right there. Um, but yeah, essentially what they've kind of shown us here is a fantastic set of uh, features. Just going back to this slide here, we can see uh, there's a number of um, kind of key areas. We've got OCR, we've got doc translation, and we've got autofill columns. Now, essentially, OCR is optical character recognition, um, which basically is if, say, for example, we were to upload some images that uh, had text in it. Now, you might be thinking, well, what images might have text in it? Now, I've worked with a lot of organizations in the past before, um, which have had like needs to archive physical pieces of paper. So I worked in the past before with a, a historian who had loads of pieces of paper, um, old kind of things uh, that were stated back hundreds of years, and they wanted to kind of digitally archive those. Now, what you can do is take pictures of that using your phone, upload it to SharePoint, and then OCR can pick out key bits of information from that to extract it out um, and tag against uh, the actual item then the record the document inside of sharepoint so you can easily search filter uh, or use copilot to find it afterwards doc translation is what we were looking at before where we can seamlessly translate content into a well at the moment a handful of different uh, it says dozens of supported languages and i'm sure that will roll out and, and there'll be more in the future and um, which again I'm hoping that it's not just doc translation, but it'll be page translation soon, because that'll make everyone's life a lot easier when it comes to multilingual related intranets. Then we have autofill columns, which is basically where it's extracting um, key information based on a prompt, so like that summary, or look inside of this document and pull out the customer's name and put it against the document. That in itself could save loads of time. I mean, if you've got an administrator at the moment who uploads documents and they're, and they're having to put in loads of information into a CRM system or something like that. Um, if you have all that information already inside of a document, like an invoice or a proposal or something like that, you can extract all that out and put it in um, to your, your library really simply, really easily using autofill. And then you could group, so say for example, if you were extracting out the customer name, you could group all documents by customer name. So rather than having to find a customer folder, it just automatically tags it with the customer name and then you group it by the customer name going forward to make it much easier. And actually that gets rid of the need for folders in that scenario because actually then you could have loads of different views filtering and grouping by loads of different um, tags, metadata tags essentially, inside of your SharePoint document library. So I hope you found that video useful. If you did, give us a like. Um, if you've got any questions at all, Use the comments feed below, and of course, subscribe for more SharePoint content.